have um, we have a Twitter work feature installed at the top. Okay, the reason why we install it at the top, we install the works at the top, is that if someone is at the library, the person can have access to or see these works, so that the works will not be blocked by these panels. So they are quite big enough for people to see it from a distance. And uh, when you come closer, you might see the details. So he also used the technique that Ruska Buski also used, that seal screen. But over here, the, image, Im the images were printed on plastic, black, po uh, black polythene plastic. So, and also because of the heat and the interaction between the paint or the paste and uh, this, how do you call it, the plastic, sometimes they sort of melt or maybe fold in, so, in, in, in a certain way. So in the process of that, in doing that, um, they create different textures in the images. So as we, as we are looking around, we are seeing that each image has a certain kind of texture, appearance sort of, yeah. And then um, they are more like portraits of friends that are sourced from Instagram. Um, so the title of the work is called uh, the Gram series. Um, during COVID, a lot of people were posting so many images or making use of the social media. So he decided to start um, maybe a mini series and later on he expanded on it. So just something little, a little basic idea, you can expand it in so many ways. Yeah. So the material will determine how it looks, how it appears, and so yeah. Okay. Yes, I have a question. Yes. Please do the background pictures give any form of information? Um, what, if you say the background pictures, what do you mean? Like the, the color in the background? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, it's, I think he used those particular colors to create some kind of contrast. So the contrast will allow uh, maybe the figure to come out. Do you get it? So that it doesn't blend with the background. You can see the figure, the figure will stand out from the, the background. Yeah. If you use a lighter, how do you call it, a lighter background, then the, the figure, you have to use something that's darker for it to stand, to stand out. Yeah. And sometimes uh, he also used something that's a bit darker to make, um, so that the work does, is, so that the work is not too bright and, and can, it can be a bit subdued. The colors are a bit subdued. They are, they are not so gorgeous, like in your face, sort of. Yeah. We have, uh, we are in the installation of uh, Hannah Tutiki and Bernard Aquajasens. Uh, and then, Hannah Tutiki is from Denmark. So she made this costume for a silent parade. Do you know what a parade is? Maybe you are going on a procession, you are banging on the on drum and so on, you're dancing and so on. But this kind of parade is silent. You don't have to make noise and also you just have to move, move quietly. So what happened was that she wanted to collaborate with an artist, a Ghanaian artist who is into performance. So there's difference between performance and performing art. Performance art, you use your whole body. The body is in action. You don't have to draw it or you don't have to photograph it or so, yeah. So the performance, the body itself is doing the work. And it's live, like what's happening now. Performing art is usually done on stage, maybe dance, theater, and so on. So that's the difference. So the artist Bernard Akwej, who is a Ghanaian, um, got a costume when he was in South Africa. And he collaborated with um, some volunteers who went on a certain silent parade with, 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 with him. So, in this video, for instance, you see him walking slowly and gently, calmly uh, through the landscape, and then um, and and there's a certain meditative um, approach to the work too, because sometimes you are kind of shielded in a certain hood, and you are thinking and just silently working. So that's Bernard Akwe Jackson, yeah, colored in blue and and and. Um, 
blue and gold, very good. And um, the costume is borrowed from the traditional gang uh, priest costumes. So the work exists as um, actual costume that was sent back to. After they were done, they sent the costume to us in uh, Ghana. And then, so the work exists as costume textiles which are installed over here, and then as video, and also as photographs over here. So all of this is one work. Do you get it? Any question? Okay. Yeah. So, why is he working in that style? In that style? Yes. Um, I think to... Everything is fast-paced these days. Sometimes artists want to create situations whereby um, they try to create the opposite of what you, you expect them to do. Do you get it? Um, I, I've never asked him about the reason why he moves slowly, but also there's a certain meditative approach to it. As if you are, if you walk fast, you miss so many things. But when you are walking slow, you you pay attention to so many things as you are moving in the landscape. So please, when they wear the dress, what at the dress do them for? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, just like. Uh, Choristers, when they are singing, they know that at that moment when you wear that costume, you feel like this is what you have to perform. So all the rules and regulations that are associated with it, you sort of um, carry it out in, in, in the performance. So over here too, the expectation is that you have to work silently. However you do it, it's up to you. So you can see that each one is working uh, at a certain pace. Um, they, are, they are working at a uniform pace, but the way someone will work will be different from the way another person will also work. It's not necessarily... Um, yeah, they, as much as they try to do one thing, there is also difference in it. Yeah, basically. So please, was this done in South Africa? Yes, South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah? Okay. What? Texture of uh, cloth did they use for them? Um, they use different fabrics, so from corduroy to um, maybe polyester to cotton and so on, so blended. And the design comes from so many sources, from ropes uh, and then, um, yeah, from so many uh, sources. Shall we go to this place? Over here, we are in the installation of Esnam Damali. So, installation involves sculptures and it's like a combination of so many things that you can, uh, that you can move around. You can, you can, the physical body can go into the work itself. Like that one and this one. So, over here, I'm sure you are familiar with this kind of uh, mannequins. So, when you go to her salons, you will find them other they are used as, uh, maybe the ladies who know them, uh, other they are used as, um, uh, how do you call it, a mannequin to exhibit different hairstyles. Or sometimes I'm sure they learn how to we, uh, weave on them. So what she, this artist did was to borrow this idea and then um, color it with a certain pigment. Um, there's a certain dye that's used for, to color the hair called uh, yumbo and she got interested in it because uh, according to the sources, it doesn't break the hair, unlike uh, the normal dyes that we have. Um, but it, and it also comes from a certain source that people don't want to reveal. So that myth or mystery about it is what she's interested in. She's interested in. She grew up in a salon, so she sort of used materials that are quite immediate to her and also exaggerate some of the hair cells. These hairstyles are used in, back in the 80s, 90s. They are not common these days, unless you go to 
it's very typical like this. Yeah. And then she came up with her own design. So. Yeah. Okay, please, I, I want to ask. Please, there are two different materials yes. here. Um, yeah. okay. I want to know their names. Names, uh, I can't tell. But this one is plastic and this one is um, hair extension. Okay. Yeah. Um, these are the kind of plastic thread they use in plaiting the hairs or, or tying hairs um, for in the traditional setting. Yeah. But this one is also, how do you call it, um, hair extensions that she bought to use to make this work. Yeah. And this has a certain sculptural um, uh, presentation because you can go around it it's like it's in three dimensions it can be measured in length breadth and height do you get it but two dimensional works like paintings photographs you can measure them in length breadth and height. it's really it's only length and breadth that's why it's called two dimensional work two dimensions length and breadth and this one is length breadth and then the height okay now the texture of this of these materials or this sculpture piece has been transposed onto or mapped onto a 3D figure, a certain software that they use to make uh, sculptural objects in virtual space. So um, the texture has been put on it and then photographs of these posters. I'm sure you see some of these posters when you go to hair salons or if you go to Barbary salon you see these kind of posters. Uh, different hairstyles on salons, um, different hair haircuts on, on a poster. So she used the salon one and then the figure that was mapped is now placed in, uh, on this poster in another software called Photoshop. So the two images are blended together and they are printed out as one images. Yeah. So you can see the transition of this into this. Do you get it? Yeah. All right. Shall we? Let's go to this way. So you have the work of Sakite. This is an installation. So you can hear sound in this work. You can see images. Um, you can see drawings. And then you can see something as sculptural. So these drums are based on the local drums we have here and then they are made out of wood and then um, goat skin. Um, the work was made during the Hamatan uh, season, so or the Hamatan period. So what happened is that when the rainy season started, it has become a bit uh, um, loose, sort of. So the texture or the, how do you call it, the sound also differs. The local drums that they use over here, they are cylindrical. But he decided to make them into a cuboid and then um, and also into different shapes or different sizes. So when you strike it, this all sound differently. So those that are, how do you call it? Those where the membranes are on two uh, sides, they are, how do, uh, they are installed in such a way that you can interact with them. So people can come here and interact with their work. Yeah. And also, he, with, I'm sure you can hear the sound in the background. He worked with a certain, with some kids in the neighborhood of uh, Red Clay, where they spent some time rehearsing for the opening of the exhibition. So they did a certain performance over here. Um, and they also made this drawing based on the Arabic alphabet as they were having the, the, the training. So this Arabic, each one to choose an, uh, an Arabic alphabet and either extract some shapes out of it or add something to it. So in the course of this, you, the image that's, the final image is more like mixed. It, you can't tell whether it's actually a certain alphabet. So it becomes images that they have created. It has nothing to do with uh, the alphabet again. Um, just like the way the drums came out of the local drums, and modify in a certain way. So if does any of you know how to drum or would you like to try try it? Uh, yeah. Try. Yeah. Yeah. 
No? Let me try this one. Yeah? Uh, which one of you can try? Oh, have fun, have fun, have fun. Okay, okay. One. So you just be hitting one, one, one. Hit it, let me see. I'll be hitting it continuously. So, so you, someone also should be trying. Just have fun with it. Uh, the drums are based on the traditional drums that we know, like the ones that comes with the round shapes and forms and things like that. So it was more like a challenge to him. We threw a challenge to him to make different forms, like uh, approach different forms of making drums like he, uh, he would normally do. So instead of making them round and in the shapes that he's used to, he's going to make them in rectangular shapes. Um, having them smaller or bigger yeah and also you realize that there are these strings it's all of those strings are materials that are used in making the traditional drums so they are using the same materials and also adding uh, new uh, materials as well so it's just a blend of all of that yeah. okay let's dance <laughs> Play, 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 play. One, two, three, go. Okay, you are going back down there, okay? Oh, she's that. Oh. Ah. So had fun like your. <laughs> okay, shall we go to the library? Let's see the last work over there. Okay, we are in the library of uh, SCC Tamale, and then um, we saw some rings um, in the gallery, isn't it? Now, <clears throat> I mentioned earlier on that you have. Oh, please come this way. Don't sit. Come. We'll be done soon. We, we have um, a bigger hand with smaller rings. Over here, the artist sort of inverted it. So we have a small hand and a very big uh, ring. And the ring represents certain iconic places in the place that sh she was living. So Verdin is a, maybe, it's a neighborhood in Berlin. So she tries to come up with um, sculptural pieces that will represent um, those iconic places in Berlin. So you have uh, maybe the job center somewhere. Uh, this one you have euros on it. Maybe it has to do with the bank. Maybe over here you have Bedin. Uh, Bedin. Maybe it's an iconic place uh, in Bedin too. So all of them um, have all the seven hands or seven rings carry different iconic places in Berlin. <coughs> so you see how just the idea of a ring and a hand can allow you to imagine um, situations or objects in a different way. Over there, they are just objects. Here, they are places that people live in or um, certain functions. All right. So, how was the person was able to do the hands? They are modeled. <clears throat> you know, we, the material that's used to make them is called clay. So, clay is malleable. <coughs> You, you can, it's like a piece of earth that you can mix with water and then mold it, add pieces of it together and sometimes take certain shapes out of it. So you get a form that you want. Allow it to dry 
and when it dries, um, it can become hard. Do you get it? And later on, you can, for it to be permanent, or maybe more permanent, you put it in an oven, or you call it fire. You put it in a certain situation that will allow heat to go around it, to extract the water content out of it. Do you get it? That's how come they are sort of solidifying this. But they are still fragile. Clay works are usually fragile. Again. Yeah, it's intentional because she probably she's she's looking at uh, different hands, not holding her hand. Yeah, as much as that's very uh, that's a smart question uh, because as much as you think that you are dealing with one hand, you are repeating the idea of the hand. They are also different, so difference and also repetition is involved in one work. Do you understand? Yeah. I spoke about existing otherwise, that there are so many crises that we are living in today, isn't it? So, this artist is it's more like an activist, trying to raise awareness about the precarious situations we are living in as, as, as a species, human beings. If you, if you, the decisions that politicians are making, various governments are making, corporations are making, who influence us as um, a species. Do you get it? The human being might go to extinct or based on the kind of activities that we do in, um, in our various uh, settings or localities or environment, it sort of affects the global or the universe, which comes back in a different way. So in the course of that, you have uh, maybe global warming, you have uh, um, Various, um, how do you call it? Um, uh, you have climate changes that's happening, drought happening in certain places, uh, fire also happening in certain places. So many ecological um, disasters, disasters are happening in the world. So most of them are based on the way we live and how we are probably insensitive to the or insensitive to the climate or ecology, basically. So over here, he's in a certain environment, in the city, sort of, and trying to um, became there as a group or as a unit to protest against some of the certain actions that um, the governments were doing. So in the peak of the city, they sort of create certain, um, uh, how do you call it, um, they occupy the space to raise awareness to to raise awareness about the precarious situations we are living in. But this is happening happening in the UK. Yeah. So you can see that some of them were, were even arrested, and maybe they didn't have permissions and so on. So art goes in different dimensions. It can go into activism, it can go into so many areas. So it's a very broad field that absorbs so many things. Yeah. Alright. I think uh, we are done at SCCA, and then we move to Nkuma Volni. It has been an amazing experience here at uh, SCCA Tamale with our tour guide, Mr. Uh, Selom. And we'd like to say a very big thank you for taking us through this place. We've learned a lot. Me personally, I've learned more about artists and their uh, different mindsets on different opinions and what really touched me was the creating of awareness so i really learned a lot and we are this is our first place we are going to Nkrumah Valini to learn more so stay tuned as we go there GNTV Junior oh i can't hear you GNTV Junior stay tuned next week on Tamale Experience Okay guys, so we've now arrived at our second stop, which is the Nkuma Volini. So we also have people who did not have permission, but they are into mining. So those who call Galamsey. They are animated because of the light. They don't like light. 
not able to use their leg to st- stack on the wall? Wow. That's a very scientific question that I may not be able to answer.